The Immersive Digital Experiences Alliance is a nonprofit industry association developing a family of royalty-free technical specifications to enable the digital future. Our members bring world-class experience in light field and holographic imaging, distribution networks, and content creation. You can learn more at immersivealliance.org. The IDEA Specialized Contract Track consists of eight segments covering all aspects of immersive media. In this segment, we'll explore creating the immersive future, a case study on a recent demonstration of streaming a light field over a 10G network. Hi, it's great to be here to talk about the demo that we presented at the SCTE Cable Tech Expo in October 2020. The SCTE Cable Tech Expo is the largest cable telecom and technology trade show in the Americas. It's also the preeminent event for thought leadership in our industry. I'm DJ Lal. I'm the Senior Director of Emerging Technologies at Charter Communications. We worked with many industry partners and other teams at Charter Communications to deliver this demo. To showcase the power of the cable 10G network, I'll walk you through some of the key challenges that we had to overcome in order to deliver this demo. But first, let's watch. 10G certainly makes for an exciting future for the cable industry. One of the most fun parts of my job is envisioning how our network can enable and deliver the future living room or what some entrepreneur is cooking up in their garage somewhere. And the cable broadband network is the perfect sandbox for innovating these network-powered experiences. So earlier this year, we partnered with multiple cross-industry companies to see how we could deliver a glimpse into the future living room and the workplace. Virtually every sci-fi movie created over the last 40 years has envisioned a holographic future from the holographic message in a bottle to visual computing. But realizing this vision requires the capability to capture a light field and transmit it over a network. So you might be asking yourselves, what is a light field? Well, we see the world because of light. Light rays reflecting off objects in front of you follow a path from the source of your light into your eyes, causing you to experience an image of the world. What's the catch? Capturing a true light field requires an array of hundreds of cameras recording information at terabits per second. Once this light field payload is created, there are hundreds of millions of pixel data that have to be rendered in a 3D volume. Only then is it possible to create the scene in a wide array of perspectives. User can see around objects, realize shadows, just like the real world. This is the definition of true immersive. And of course, without a superior network with the latest compute, this wouldn't be possible. You can think of the network as one really, really long HDMI cable, of course, figuratively. Well, I think with delivery over a 10G networks, that future is just around the corner. So before we run the demos, let's look at how it all came together. Five key technology elements were developed by this team to power the demos. First, light field scene capture. On location in Los Angeles, our partner Visby conducted one of the first commercial light field shoots. Using an array of 100 cameras sampling at 250 gigabits per second, they produced 8,000 minutes of raw video footage. Second, edge compute. We're hosting the content in the compute cluster sitting at the cable edge. 50 gigabits per second compressed to run over a multi-gigabit network. Third, immersive cloud application. This is developed software to manage a two-way, low-latency connection and deliver holographic data downstream that alters with gesture input from the user sent upstream. Fourth, cable network and in-home. This demo is running over a 10G-capable network, leveraging systems from our partners at Comscope, delivering a 2 gigabit per second symmetrical capacity into the demo home with single-digit millisecond latency. An in-home is via a Wi-Fi 6E connection, multi-gigabit into the home and throughout the home. And lastly, the fun part, holographic display. What you'll see is the latest scale, high-resolution immersive display from Looking Glass Factory delivering 33 million pixels, providing a 3D video experience for everyone in the room without ever needing to wear a headset. The Looking Glass works by providing 45 discrete views of a three-dimensional virtual scene and presents these images over a 50-degree viewing cone. This produces an interactive hologram into the world, allowing true depth and parallax for multiple users at different perspectives. And we have filmed this live 3D experience for you to view today in a 2D stream. This is the first time a hologram has been streamed over a 10G network. 
All right, so the moment we have been waiting for, let's get into demo number one. If we put together a high bandwidth, low latency cable network with the latest compute, how would that transform how we work and develop the next generation of products? Wow, what a glimpse into the future workplace. Kudos to the film crew capturing the experience. It's not easy capturing a 3D hologram in 2D. On to demo number two. So, as the industry delivers 10G technology and high end compute into the home, what sort of lean forward interactive experience can this enable? Hello and welcome to your virtual interactive yoga class. Let's set up for Warrior Two by widening our stance on the mat, lifting our arms up to the side, and make sure that our wrists are in line with our ankles. From here, you're gonna to wanna to bring your back foot forward as well as your front foot. Turn your gaze so that you're staring off the tip of your fingertips. Bend your knee into Warrior Two. Bring your back arm, swing it down and up, and bring your back heel up. From here, use some momentum to bring your knee to your chest. You can grab your knee and bring it out to the side. And if you can, grab the side of the back of your foot. And extend. and you can bring it back down. You did a great job. Incredible. Lots of promise for new network enabled products and services. The cable future is very real and achievable. Where do we go from here? What can we do with a 10G network? Well, today we saw a glimpse of how a network this powerful can enhance how we work and live. We're partnering throughout the industry, including those who've helped create the demos today, to standardize on immersive media and accelerate getting these experiences into everyone's living room. This is the power of our collaborative industry, and we welcome others to get involved. So in closing, to everyone that pushed hard to make this production a success, thank you. And to all the millions of cable employees and partners, thank you. Enjoy the rest of the show. We're gonna try and increase the bandwidth to the maximum capable. Make sure that all our network interfaces can support that. So what we're drawing here is the storyboarding for the demo to future of the living room. So the idea behind this is they're working out at home, they're doing yoga classes, so interacting with this holographic view of a virtual yoga class will give them a better understanding into the poses themselves. They'll be able to interact with it, rotate it. We are shooting a yoga sequence. We have an instructor, and that person is going to become a hologram that lives in the looking glass display. So this is kind of like what we've all seen in sci-fi, Star Trek, Star Wars, right? The hollow deck. And that's really the potential here. 
So we've got 100 cameras, it's all wired together and synchronized. They're gonna be capturing all the light coming off the scene simultaneously. And then that gets sort of compressed back down into a single hologram. Got it? We're absolutely gonna need a very powerful network for hologram. When you think of 100 different cameras shooting 4K, feeding into one system, that is a ton of data. Not only are we using a ton of network bandwidth to display these images on 8K on the looking glass, but we're also taking a user's gestures, moving them back up the network, and then reflecting it on the screen in real time. We can monitor to see what gesture is being recognized and what stream is being sent out. This project, it has enabled us to showcase the present and the future of the network. It has allowed us to demonstrate how Spectrum leads the thought as well as the technology development. We're gonna be able to really take people to totally new places. That was fun. Our goal was to demonstrate how a 10G network will transform the way we work and play. We translated this goal into a vision of streaming an interactive full motion hologram over the 10G network to the latest holographic display. But what is 10G? The 10G platform, it's a portfolio of technologies that will provide multi-gig services downstream and upstream. So it'll deliver speeds that are 10 times faster than today's cable networks and 100 times faster than what many consumers currently get. Think about what you saw in the demo for a second. Have you seen a full motion light field transmitted over the network to a display that also resolves the holograms for multiple viewers based on their perspective simultaneously? To our knowledge, this has not been done before. Network is indeed the enabler to the holographic future. With the capability to support multi-gigabit bandwidths, single-digit millisecond latencies, and the compute and the storage that allows content to be served from the edge, all to be available in the near future. Now, this changes the way that we can interact with our world. I highly encourage you to research 10G to understand this coming leap in broadband and how it will power the next wave of innovation. Here, you see the end-to-end -end delivery architecture. Now, you may recognize this from the video. Now, the five key elements are the light field scene capture, the edge compute cluster, the immersive cloud application, the cable network that delivers multi-gig data rates, and the home network that's also operating at these same data rates, and finally, the holographic display, which is driven by a client computer. This slide shows the high-level software architecture that we custom built for the demo. We began by evaluating what it would take to perform a real-time render of the light field from a camera perspective chosen by a viewer. Now, you may have seen this as a full six-staff experience in a VR head-mounted display before, but there's a complication here. For a given camera perspective, the scene that had to be rendered had to be rendered from all possible user perspectives supported by a holographic display, not just those two views that you have to render for in a stereoscopic HMD. For the looking glass display, this was 45 views over a 50 degree angle. Now back of the cal cal envelope calculation kind of made it clear that we had stepped into these uncharted waters. Now we would need 30 high-end GPUs or more to render a requested camera perspective in real time. So we devised a unique patent pending scheme to pre-render the content from a discrete set of camera perspectives while switching from one camera perspective to another using user provided gestures. At the Edge Cloud, we had multiple files, each representing the same content, but from a different camera perspective. One of these files was streamed at a time using UDP to the client at a very high bit rate, typically between 500 megabits per second and one gigabit per second. 
used FFmpeg to decode each frame at the client and pass this to the display's VLC player. Gestures were recognized at the client by interpreting hand pose and sent using TCP sockets upstream to the server. Each gesture was mapped to a camera perspective. Now this mapping itself could be stateful or stateless. A valid gesture would allow the server to switch the media stream based on the requested camera perspective. We faced numerous challenges in our design and implementation. Uh, to name a few, supporting such a high resolution decode, streaming a video format that got converted into a hologram, minimizing the gesture response latency in switching media streams. So more on that in the next few slides. Looking glass display composes a hologram from a video frame by aligning each tile in a large mosaic of images with a particular view, user view or angle. For visual fidelity, we chose to transmit an 8K by 8K tile frame, which is one of the largest supported by the display. We were pre-encoding the content at the server, but the client was decoding the frames in real time. This, of course, led to a frantic search for a decoding solution from ASICs to FPGAs to GPU, our first challenge. Not only did we need to use a low latency decode, but we also wanted to minimize bandwidth use. These were, of course, conflicting requirements. After testing multiple solutions, we found the right fit in the HEVC decoder from NVIDIA's library, which is actually among the handful of solutions that will allow decode of such high resolution images with tolerable latency. Our decoder was a 2080 Ti GPU card. Our next challenge was compressing this 50 gigabits per second stream down to a manageable bandwidth while not introducing compression artifacts that would come through in a hologram. Now, this was a careful balancing act between the network bandwidth and the decode capability of the 2080 Ti. We pre-encoded at multiple bandwidth settings and ran the real-time decode to observe for frame loss. Now, this frame loss could manifest as video motion jerkiness or stutter. While the bitrate was tied to the complexity of the content, we were able to benchmark streaming bit rates in excess of 500 megabits per second. Of course, this was not a problem for a symmetrical multi-gig link. Multiple such streams can actually be supported by a cable 10G network. We spent significant time optimizing stream switching delay, both at the client and the server. While the server settings were used in a non-real-time encode, is important to ensure that we could immediately seek to a new frame number in a different stream as stream switching was implemented. Now setting a GOP size of one was one of a series of optimizations that we performed there on the server. Similarly at the client also, we spent our effort minimizing the delays from buffering and reordering. We've listed a sampling of optimizations on this particular slide. To put together a solid demo, we also needed an attractive ergonomic device for gesture recognition. We used this device called a litho. The device sent hand poses to the looking glass display client via Bluetooth where valid gestures were recognized. Now these were sent upstream to the server where the stream switching was performed based on a table lookup. And finally, for the future of work demo, the sheer volume of rendering that we needed to be performed is worth mentioning. For rendering uh, of the router asset, we used Octane Render and Open Shader to create those ray trace prototypes of the router that you saw. Rendering for 45 different views for each frame means we had more than 40,000 renders for just 30 seconds of a full motion hologram. In conclusion, we had great fun building the demo. Of course, it took the cooperation of a lot of partners and the active involvement of multiple teams to make it happen. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Thanks for joining us in this segment from the Immersive Digital Experiences Alliance. IDEA is a nonprofit industry group developing a family of royalty-free technical specifications to enable the digital future. You can learn more at immersivealliance.org. You can join IDEA Download the ITMF specifications or white paper, or just join our mailing list to stay informed. Thanks for joining us today.